Hi there, I'm Anastasia, Webflow Templates designer, and today I keep designing event company Webflow Template. And in this recording, I'm going to show you how I'm doing mobile responsive adjustments to the template that I've just developed. So I've developed all the pages and all the CMS template pages for desktop so far. So I'm creating, I'm adding larger breakpoints to my template to preview how it looks like on big screen sizes. Okay, and all those breakpoints, they drag the information and all the starting from the base breakpoint from the desktop. So let's preview actually how it looks like. 2080 looks great. This one, 1440 pixels looks perfect it's like it's my favorite breakpoint normally i designed for this one okay and now let's take a look how it behaves on a larger breakpoint okay i see it's not bad actually because i set the limits for the sliders for the grids so that actually looks quite good so we to be sure 100% we need to test all the pages that we design. Okay, so I had this idea to make the website look a bit old style. And you may notice that it's, it, it already looks kind of a little bit retro style. <laughs> Probably because, yeah, I used some styling options like Polaroid images and also some like images so yeah it's sort of hippie hippie look but what happens if i'm looking at this screen from a bigger screen something like macintosh uh-huh you can see that i set the limits to 1920 so it doesn't scale, it doesn't expand bigger than this, which is good. But what I don't like is that we can see this blank canvas. That means we need to add more elements here to this infinite marquee section. I'm going to select all sections on the base breakpoint, and I'm going to set the maximum with to 1920 and to center elements horizontally. Let's see what happens. So yeah, this should be the last breakpoint. What about bigger screen sizes? So we still can see this blank space, sometimes just for a moment. So yeah, we still need to add something there. But you can see that probably, probably it would be a good idea to use a page wrap that would set the limit of the container to this. Okay, I'm going to remove those auto margins and maximum width because I'm going to wrap all those elements in a div block. Perfect. And now I'm going to give this D block a class. So let's give it a class page wrapper. Okay, now I can see its styling options. I'm going to give it a width of 100% and maximum width of 19, 20 pixels with centering the element horizontally. Okay, and now I'm going to remove this class from the body completely. Page wrapper, I'll give it a background class so pinkish. Okay. By the way, where is the background shape? It used to be here. Let's take a look. Where is it? Background shape. Here it is. We need to set up its Z index to zero. 
Good. So now what I want to try is I want to select body all pages and set its background color to green. It is not distinguishable at all. How about we keep the background color white, but give it a pattern, this pattern. Let's preview. Oh, that looks something, un something unique to me. Wow, looks cool, looks cool, really cool. But I'm not sure about keeping it because I have this one. <laughs> I have this background right here. So probably, how about I remove it from here and I remove those unnecessary stylings. I think it looks cool, really cool. Yeah, let's preview other pages. Let's go to festivals and see how it looks there. Okay, so we need to wrap festivals page again in, in the wrapper. I'm going to remove background pinkish from here and I'm going to wrap in div block navbar and then drag and drop all that elements one by one. I'm going to give it a glass page flawless looks flawless let's go to blog I want to take a look what I listen to right now anyway I'll show you look it's Limp biscuit just like this what do you listen to let me know in the comments okay let's preview this page on the bigger screens I think it looks great okay let's go to blog and again, let's remove this class and wrap all the elements in a page wrapper. How about we give top and bottom? I think it looks so much nicer with these top and bottom margins. I can imagine that some of the designers are looking at me right now and they're like, oh my God, what is she doing? That's insane don't do that but i don't care <laughs> i'm playing around i'm experimenting and i'm learning new things okay let's keep going to sponsors let's see how sponsors look now okay also they need refinements let's wrap in deep look and give it a glass page cool by the way i'm thinking maybe increasing it now 40 pixels and let's so right now we need to minus 80 yeah wow i'm a genius let's go to the contact page and remember, those stylings are only for the larger screens, larger breakpoints. So on regular MacBook device, it would look different. Okay, so I was going to go to the contact page and remove the styling from the body and wrap everything in a page wrapper. Let's repeat the same for the template pages, the style guide, the licensing, and change log. Those are necessary text field and give it a combo class area. Okay, now let's tick form, select contact form. Let's do this one. Give us a span of two columns. Yeah, that's better. Contact form. No, it's not contact form. It's contact form block. Okay, cool. And we've got one more. No, two more. 
pages to refine. So I'm going to repeat the process. Let's set the page or display to flex and vertical. Let's go back here and select sizing to grow if possible. That's why. Yeah, that's better. Let's go to the same as collection pages now. Okay. What I'm going to do here. So I've already have some class here. It's called Overflow Hidden. I'm going to remove this class. I'm going to give a class page wrapper artist page. I'm going to set overflow to hidden and background to green. Okay, now I want to increase the height, the Z index of the footer so that the image would not overlap it. Okay, let's go to footer, set position to relative and set index to one. I think that would be enough. Yes, perfect. Let's preview other artists. I like it. Let's go to the next one, to the festivals. Okay, so what's up with the festivals? I'm going to remove this background color. And same. Wrap everything. Wrap it up. Page. Wrapper. Okay, cool. And now I'm going to give it a class, combo class. Where is it? Yeah, make sure that you have this class selected when you make updates. Because sometimes when it lags, you might not get your update saved. Okay, let's give it a combo class festival page. And set the background color to green. Let's preview. I kind of love it. But now I don't feel good about this pattern. Let me give it just background pinkish class. Yeah, I think that's better. But anyway, I have my concerns about this hover state for the button. And I think I'm going to work on it more because actually on hover state it's not visible Shall I keep everything black? But white looks so much better. So I set up an interaction for this page. When it loads, it shows all the text in white, not in black. But I don't like the hover state for the button. I noted it down and I'll go. I'll keep going with other pages. Got so much to do. Okay, let's wrap up the sponsor page. Wrap and block. Let's give it a class page wrapper. Awesome. I think it's awesome. Okay, and the last one out of those. Awesome. Okay, and let's also check this for all four page. Yeah, it also needs some refinements. Page wrapper. Awesome. Done. Now, when we're done with refining and cleaning up the styling for the desktop and larger screen sizes, let's clean up our style manager a bit. I'm removing, I've removed the unnecessary classes that are not used anywhere. Let's check the same for the interactions. It's clean. Okay. Now let's go back to homepage and work on the tablet and down mobile screen sizes adjustments. You can see what's going on, right? It's because we haven't adjusted the sizes at all yet. So let's do it right now. Let's start with the nav bar. So we've got here a menu button, which opens to this nav menu drop down. 
Okay, I'm going to remove this one from here. And I'm going to give it pinkish background color. That's cool. I think maybe I'll, yeah, I'll give it text alignment like this. This one is going to be menu button class. I'm going to remove the background color for the open state right away. And I'm going to remove the icon because I love using Lottie animations. So I'm going to paste here Lottie and let's go to lottieflow.com. Explore menu nav. I really like this one. For frenzy, it might look good. This one also looks good for this one, for this design. I'm choosing between this one and let's try this one yeah i think this one is quite simple okay and i'm going to give it a specific color that i'm using on the website i'm going to take it from here the color code perfect okay now let's go upload it i'm going to limit menu button to 60 pixels I'm going to remove a bit spacing and load animation I'm going to set the combo class to display flex for this one I think also no no that won't work okay so I'm setting the size into don't trick don't grow whatever just don't do it okay so now I am going to set up the opening interaction. To do this, I'm selecting navbar element and I go to the interactions panel, to the element trigger, and I choose navbar opens. Select an action, start an animation. I'm going to create a new interaction, navbar opens. Select Lottie animation and select Lottie. Set an initial state to 0% and then 50%. So let's hide this one from here. Why well, I can't scroll? Let me open. Yeah, okay. So the time, the built in time for the 50% of this low T is. One and a half second. Let's try 1.5. Maybe this one better. So let's go with this. Now, when menu closes, let's start an animation. Duplicate this one. Now rename it. And now let's just update to 100% and move this one under it and set its direction to zero. Make sure it's linear. Perfect. I'm going out of the full screen width. Let's preview. Awesome. Now I'm going to bring back color. Oh, should I? I'm not sure yet, but that's okay. Let me fix this scrolling straight away. So I'm going to select huge text and I'm going to divide it by two. For sponsors heading, I'm going to set 32 pixels. So I definitely will need to update all the heading styles for tablet and, and mobile devices. Let's just keep going infinite marquee text block yeah let's decrease all the headings everything this one looks good it looks good i'm going to keep working on the tablet adjustments for the frenzy website template so i've developed the navbar which looks like this. 
I don't enjoy that this picture covers the kind of main element on this screen. So how about we move it something like this? Yeah, that solved everything, honestly. Also, I think I'm going to add another thing to this navbar opens interaction. So I'm going to give the background color to the navbar. And I'm going to make it pinkish, starting with 0% opacity. And pinkish with 100% opacity. Let's set duration to 200 milliseconds. And let's also adjust the closing interaction. So for the closing interaction, I want the navbar, not brand logo, but navbar. Yep. Go back to 0% opacity. Okay, let's preview it. Awesome. As for these festivals grid, I like it, but I think I'm going to decrease the size for the H2 headings. And actually, I'm going to bring it somewhat closer to my typical designs. Okay, I'm going to select to select all H1 headings. And for this one, I'm going to use, let me actually open this typescale.com resource. Yep, something like this. Let's try something like this. Okay, and now let's set its maximum to 17 characters, exactly like it used to be. For the H2, I'm going to use just a bit bigger sizing, like this. I like how it looks good. For this one, I think I'm going to use something just a bit smaller. Okay. In centered still looks good block card heading so this one is h3 but it's already 28 pixels so i'm going yeah to make it a bit smaller something like this yes cool here what am i going to do with the reviews let me just think about it one of the things that i'm thinking to do is to get rid of those error buttons because we have here a nice slider animation and actually it will also work on swiping on tablet and mobile devices so yeah probably Review content. Let's decrease its font size just a little bit. Okay. Let's keep going. So for the sponsors. For the sponsors, we cannot have this in interaction because on tablet we don't use a mouse usually. So users might be able to see this background image as soon as they click some of the cards. Let's try and preview it in two column size. I think that works a little bit better because it gives a bit more space for the logo and the decorative icons. And as for this, section i think i'm going to just make it vertical 
somewhat like this. Let's also adjust footer because now we now we kind of have some work to do. So I'm going to set the position to static footer wrap. I'm going to give it a grid, but let's actually make it one column grid. Oh, how about flex? It's a very simple, minimalistic, and quite easy to understand. Also, users will delete those four links and these two, so it's going to be even more clean. But one thing, I really loved how this icon, it was over, a bit over the section, the other one. So I think I should bring it back because it looked really cool. Yeah, I think I need to set its position to relative. And just to move it, yeah, I think that works. Oh, what happened? <laughs> I see. So when I set vertical alignment for this card, these two kind of did the same, did the same thing because they also have this festival card. Okay. I'm going to select even items. I think I'm going to reset this thinking to wrap all those social links in a div block yeah so that right here i could set flex vertical and align it okay so now i'm going to move to the mobile screen first so on horizontal mobile it's definitely time we get rid of the two column layout so I'm selecting festival card and set vertical okay for some reason we have this even items also set to yeah, okay, we fixed it. Perfect. So now I'm going to select Festival Main Image Wrap, give it a width of 100, and I want to keep them square. So I'm going to give them a square look. Probably on horizontal mobile, it was okay with 50% with yeah let's keep them like this on horizontal mobile and as for block collection let's try something like this yeah let them be just the cards that stacked so now in the slide wrap let's set display vertical line center now i want to decrease a bit the top padding sponsors we can bring back horizontal layout and let's move to the tiniest screen to the mobile oh by the way now we can set maximum width to 100 percent Something still doesn't work. I think it's footer. Let's give it vertical links. Yeah, let's try something like this. Okay. And now as for this text, I need to go back to the desktop and to make some adjustments to it so that it would look good on all screen sizes. Okay, and now what happened to this social wrap? Festival info card. 
Let's decrease its size a bit. Star icon. I don't know. Let's play around with it. Yeah, how about something like this? Okay, and the, the first of main image, I want to give it square. So I'm going to increase its top padding. So these images, they definitely need to get some. How about we move this one? Wow, that worked well. Let's preview on smaller devices. Let's select all H1 headings. Kind of decrease its size a bit more. I think it works well. Wow. Awesome. I think we finished with this homepage mobile adjustments. I'm happy with this with the result. It was pretty straightforward and honestly I'm quite surprised. So I feel like I, I want to increase the container patterns just a bit. Let's go to the festivals page. Let's preview the mobile adjustments. They are already there because we reused the styles from the home page. So the festivals page is done. That's so cool. The blog is also ready. Those are the benefits of reusing styles and classes. Okay, so now we are inside the blog post template page. And we can see we definitely need some adjustments here. Okay, so here's how it looks on the bigger screens. Let's go to the smaller screens now. Okay, what I think to do here is... I actually think to make it vertical flex instead of grid and to make this 100% width but with margin of someone like 220 pixels. Let's go to the Polaroid card and adjust its style. Let's move it to the... Actually, I want it to go to the center. And let's increase a bit more. Okay, so at this stage, I think it's good time to update the patterns. Let's make them 24 pixels. Let's also update the sizing for this one. Okay, in Polaroid image. Let's give it 100%. By the way, how about we use or viewpoint height? I'm going to get rid of the container on the mobile device. I'm thinking about defining pixels now because it would be so much easier to work with the pixels. Let's go to the sponsor item page and we can say that it needs corrections. And right here we are setting up flex. Yeah, something like this. Yeah. Okay, so the next is Festival's template page. Let's go and pre first preview how our new style and adjustments looks. Look on the tablet. Everything looks good there. I'm going to update the H3 styling and decrease the size. It Okay, let's preview the updates on smaller devices. Artist short bio. Let's decrease its size only for 
mobile devices. When I designed this section, I, to be honest, never thought about how it would look on mobile. I think the best thing to do would be to like, make it vertical. I'm going to go to Figma, find this ticket, and design it for a mobile screen. Let's just try and see. Wow, that worked. Cool. So now, what does make this page behave like this? I think those are artists. So on the mobile, it looks good. I see. And because we have got longer names, that text goes out of the frame, makes this horizontal scrolling. So what can we do with it is we can edit grid and remove this one. So now we have artists show bio under the name. Let's try one more thing. Let's give some paddings. And by the way, also let's artist name heading. No, we don't need this one. But for the short bio, we need to add this so we can remove artist heading. Okay, for the sponsors grid, I think I want to give it a little bit of padding. Wow. Let's preview the page. Oh, we don't see the image. We don't see it. As for star icon and this icon, I see where it's coming from. Let's do all hero page. Let's preview. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to untick this animation for this section. By the way, let's preview it on mobile. On horizontal mobile, it looks good. On tablet, it looks good. But on phone, it doesn't look good, so we unticked it for phone portrait. Okay, and now we're going to create another while scrolling in view interaction only for mobile portrait. Let's take place scroll animation and let's duplicate this festival hero images scroll animation and call it mobile. I think I'm going to move this image not so much. Okay, so this one needs to be at 5% keyframe. I think it looks better. No, I don't really like that it overlaps the festival date. Also, this star icon adjusted this one. Let's decrease the gap for the artist collection list wrapper. And actually this should be decreasing for this centered head and element. Let's in increase the size of this one. Yep, just like this. And we finished with this page. Okay, let's Go to the artist template page and see if there's anything else that we should adjust. So that's the desktop page. The interactions, you can see it looks like this. Okay, now let's go to the tablet. Oh, I want to grab those social icons in a div block. Yep, that's better. Okay. This one still looks good. Probably I would just align it to the top. And for this one, I think that would be better to make it flex. I want to remove the top padding on mobile to make this uh, page a bit shorter. 
And by the way, I just noticed that we've got this interaction. Okay, so for the green pages, let's work on the navbar test color text color change interaction a bit more. Let's set filter for blue to animation and make it invert to 100%. Can we open the container of our nav menu? Cool. Let's add as well nav menu as a class and set its background color to green. So one of the options is to set everything for desktop and above for this interaction. And for smaller screens, we'll create another interaction. So yeah, let's go to the page trigger, page load, when page finishes loading and Let's select this one in page, white text on green page, mobile. Save. Let's untick desktop and above. Also, let's rename this one, this interaction. Okay, so we've got Navlink text color set to white. Let's Remove it. Load animation. Filter. Okay, button. Okay. Button border color. Okay. Text next to logo. Kind of thing that I need to give up on the white text on the green color. So let's go back to festivals and also remove the interactions that we set up for this. Festival page, hero rep. Okay. It still looks good, right? And it works good. And there is no this annoying hover interaction. Done. Let's clean up the interaction. So we don't need those two. Let's also check if we need this. Yeah, one more. Let's save. Back up manually. Short bio, we can make it a bit smaller. And the last page is contact. Contact page. Let's work on this one. So contact page wrap. So what do we have here? Yeah, I want to decrease this one. Give a bit more space to the contact form. And this one, I want to make it absolute. Okay, so here's like quick design of the mobile version for the contact page. Let's again check the cleanup styling. All looks good. And we are ready to publish. So next steps would be for me to test the website from all the devices and from different browsers like Google Chrome browser and probably Mozilla and oh my God, how is it called? Microsoft Edge. And after it, I'm going to publish the template to submit it to Webflow template marketplace and wait for the quality assessor to get back to me with some feedback with some feedback. So it might take me about one month to get this template published on Marketplace. So thank you for watching these videos. Let me know in the comments how I did. You can criticize me and see you around with future episodes. Yeah, I'm going to create more video content. So we'll be seeing each other again, with or without your consent. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye for now.